do. <coughs> All right, 147. We'll call the June 5th, 2023 Financial Services Committee to order. Yeah. Our motion to approve the agenda. Our second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Are there any public comments? Seeing none. Maintenance supervisor report. Okay. If Ms. Told Jill, if I rudely answer the phone and interrupt this, it's because I'm awaiting a call from a plumber. I have a leak in the jail on a inch and a half crimped copper line that I have shut off, but um, they said they were gonna call or be around around nine, so I'm hoping they call late. So if I answer the phone or that's what that's all about. Okay, a few things to pass on to you guys this month. Uh, start over J. Old Courthouse. Uh, a couple months ago, we talked about I was going to have a company come in, a gentleman, uh, Integrity Steel, and they were going to do some just routine maintenance on all the new slider doors in the jail that got put in. And he came a couple of weeks ago and did his thing. And there were two doors that had worked themselves a little cockeyed on there and adjusted all that. Um, lubed everything up and I did find out because the COs have some trouble with the actual physical keys on a lot of the swinging doors and they're the original keys from you know the 60s and this company they make those they can restamp those keys and it's not as much as I thought it said somewhere around like 60 70 dollars per key um, they would only need a handful of those so that's something we may look into this coming year um, same thing with some of the uh, locks on the doors that are riveted on that are getting worn out. Um, they replace those, they need to be cut off and put on, and that's something we may look into as well. This coming budget year, because I'd like to have this gentleman, this company, come back annually, and it seemed like a good deal. Everything's working really well over there now. Uh, Otis uh, utilized our service contract this past month. We as the elevator would descend from the top floor, it would make a little bit of a weird vibration noise and call them in. And what it is is the guide rails that the elevator runs on, um, they need to stay really well greased and lubed and they were pretty well dried up. And he said it's not uncommon when you get a new jack, things like that. It might not ride those rails exactly how it used to in the past. So if you got on the cart and Looped all that up and it's good to go now. It's nice and quiet. <clears throat> Over here, I uh, had one small issue with a heat pump uh, for Workforce Development Office over there. They, it just needed a charge, uh, needed refill, and it's fine now. Uh, over at, no, I don't want to go to Animal Control. Yeah, one more thing over here. Um, the weeds over here, every year I have MNL spray amidst the pines and I told him that we just put in some bare root trees and to watch out for that and he said it won't be an issue and he's going to get in there and spray all that thistle and stuff like he does every year for us. Over at Animal Control, um, the mini split finally got around to having someone look into that. Um, there were two holes in the condenser outside um, and I verified that too because I met them over there and it almost looks like they were intentional over the years and so and I'm told by them that you don't really replace one or the other when you're doing a mini split it's the inside and outside unit and it was under 4,000 to have the new mini split put in it's like 3,600 um, said they had one and they were hoping to get that in this week I told them go ahead and do it it's something that has to be in there and I thought that price was pretty fair for a mini split system for that back section of the building. So that's going to be done. Um, also over there at Animal Control, I got the old sign area removed, the posts, um, and those weeds and the landscape blocks and all that mound. I got rid of all that. Brought my tiller from home over there and tilled that flat best I could and planted grass. Um, and shortly after it became, you know, the driest three weeks we've had in, you know, five years. So it, 
Not sure the grass is coming up too well over there. Um, written down here, I don't have much more. It was really quick this morning, write some things down. I did have one quick question for you guys. This came up oh, maybe six months ago or something. We were entertaining putting animal control and morgue out in front of the building. I brought up the question, do we want to do something with the old uh, fence and mulch area where the playground used to be? Do we want to get that taken out um, and maybe get that mulch removed and some dirt brought in and plant grass there? Do we want to leave it and do nothing? What are your thoughts on that? A lot of the mulch that's sitting there I can utilize in, around the courthouse um, around some areas here, but I don't, I don't know what to do with that. Now you see in the mulch, there's cottonwood trees starting to grow in there, all kinds of stuff, and it's going to get out of control. Um, it's too bad we can't utilize that fence somewhere, but I don't know when you go ripping it out how easy it is to reuse chain link. Um, at this point, why don't you go ahead and start pulling some of the mulch out? Cool. Get to the fence later, but at least you can start utilizing that. Right. But it's just a thought, you know, putting your eyes out and see if someone comes up with an idea or someone that they know that would be helpful in getting that out of there for a small fee, whatever. But Do you have a way to pull the post? Well, I, have this, I have the skids here. I could do it. Um, I don't know. Not one man job. No, <laughs> that's the thing. It's there's a lot more to it than just ripping that out. Yeah. Is that something we could put an ad in the paper for and try to sell it? You guys are probably know that better than me, probably, huh? Uh, uh -huh. Something we ever do, or well, too bad it wasn't taller. We could use it at the end. And we could sell it, but we'd have to put it out for bid somehow for sale. That's why stuff got piled into the shed over there for years when they had an auction. Yeah. That it's I was approached a few months ago by somebody that said, hey, if you ever want to get rid of that stuff there and get some dirt. Not them meaning, hey, I'll cattle, I'm taking the fence. They meant they get rid of it and put the dirt there for me. Someone with an excavator, they were like, just a bunch to have for extra rowing in there. And the fetch isn't hurt anything. I don't mean, know. Well, so that's what I'm wondering. Can we remove the mulch and seed it and leave the fence? For now, I don't see why not. It's a good place to store it. Yeah. We'd have to have someone bring in X amount of dirt. Spread it out there. I have no way of transporting large amounts. So did they dig a bunch out when they put the mulch in? Well, when this came up, according to Sherry Johnson, she said there's like three feet of mulch there. And I questioned, I'm like, three feet? And she said, yeah, it has to be 36 inches. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I've never attempted to verify that, but that's a lot of mulch. Yeah. I mean, you would think any farther down than this, it would just be turned into compost by this point. Well, it may be. Maybe that's some playground rule or something, I don't know. Because her park district affiliation, you know, she may know these things that I don't. Well, uh, you know, maybe you get the top layer of uh, mulch off, maybe underneath is already composted. Put some dirt and seed it. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you explore those options or whatever you guys think? Because it is just going to continue to break down and weeds and things are going to grow in it. So. It needs, it needs taken out and dirt put in. And the fence being up is not going to hurt a thing as long as I can get in to move that mulch. There's a, there's yeah, a there's a double gate that opens up. Yeah. There's some room for that. It's a good place to store it until you decide what to do with it. And the, Actually, that blacktop comes in pretty handy because during election time they can back vehicles right in there to Brian's area, and it's convenient for them if there's inclement weather or whatnot. You know, it's the blacktop still kind of serves purpose, actually. 
So yeah, I just wanted to bring that up and I'll, I'll look into how much mulch was uh, out there as far as depth and well, we'll figure something out. Um, Can we go back to the vet, the yeah. vet building or the animal control? It's yeah. probably, it, you, we don't have a veterinarian anymore, correct? Correct. I, I was asked by Doc Day, the former vet over there, to remove the veterinarian sign that's by the door since we don't have a vet. Okay. Like a symbol? Like Yeah. Okay. There's another sign that I had intention on removing as well as for grooming. Oh, grooming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. When I go over there to mow that this week, I'll get both those off. And, and the, the bush is close to the building and starting to get out of hand. I don't know if you do that or you have I time did, I did it last year. Yeah. yeah. It was big. It was really out of hand last year. Yeah. <laughs> and on the north, this would be northwest side, there's those four like red barberry bushes. I'm going to remove those because that's right where the fence is going to be going. Because okay. they're right smack in line with the edge of the building, so I'm going to be getting those out probably this week as well. Because hopefully that ball will get rolled sometime soon. Yeah. Well, it just needs cleaned up a little bit there. Yeah, it'll get it looking nice. The other bushes that are there, are they getting near end of life cycle? Or I mean, are they getting to where the trunks are huge and they don't really look good? Or? The ones out front still can look pretty good. There's some on that south side where the parking lot is that they're old, like, I don't even know what, like Pocantella bushes or something that just like, they look like something you'd see growing up in the mountains now. You know, they're just, they're half dead and they just kind of, so some of those may, I don't know. It, it, they may yeah, get going. going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did. They're hard to maintain, so anything mm -hmm. that makes it easier. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get that a little more cleaned up here this week. Next week we'll get it <coughs> looking nice. Well, thanks for being a clinic to those details, Chris. Sure. Um, does anybody object if when he takes that sign off, we just give that to Dr. Day? Right. He wants it. What do you think? I'll take, take it down and I'll put it in the shed. And what would you like to do with it? Hope that we get a vet in there that we can use. Okay. <laughs> okay. So just store it in the building. Then. All right. Okay. We'll do that. Is that in our intention to get a vet? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Anything else for Chris? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, Grant Street Drainage Project. Um, they aren't here with any proposed quotes, but if, I mean, at this point, we're waiting on FSA to get back with us as to whether it's a wetland out there where we would be going through or not, and that's going to greatly affect mm -hmm. what we can and can't do. So. I have a note that says elevations to come. So they're not here to talk about it. No. Yeah, I was kind of hoping they'd be here today. Because I know they shot it. Oh. They may not have realized today was a meeting. We didn't actually contact them to tell them to be here. And since, you know, we don't know. Because if we, well, I guess it'd be nice to know what the flow we're expecting to figure whether we if the flow is no more than what the current drain over there will take, then we're fine. We just cannot enlarge that. So, and if that's the case where it's too much for that, then we have to look at maybe going in front of the courthouse and tying in to it from the parking lot that we wanted to also kind of drain. So, until we get that report, we don't know what they're going to allow us to do. That wetland determination might take six months to get done. Yeah, maybe. It, but we can't do anything without that, really. Because if we do, and we do something we're not supposed to, then I don't know what they're going to do. Make us tear it out? Or... Can we invite them to next month's meeting? We can. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I am farm management issues, updates on tiling project. You said you drove past. I, I kind of believe they're done. I just haven't moved off on the next job. I'm not sure on that. I know they contacted me that they were working on it. So. Uh, as far as tree removal over there, they they had concerns from the guy that farms the uh, Jodas land about pulling them out because they just got it stabilized where it wasn't washing through the fence line. So I said it was okay to just cut them and tore it on them so it kills them and then the roots stay. $42,069.21. It should be in their claims. Okay. Um, I don't know of anything else on farm management right now. Animal control building. You pretty much covered everything on that, right? Yeah. Hey, okay. and more. Unless, did you have any updates on the bar proofing or blood proofing? Not the amount of the animal control building? Yeah. Okay. All right, more. What do you have? I have some uh, places that uh, are up for sale. I, I, uh, I found out a good place, but I don't know what's going up for sale. Fastenal is going out of business, has gone out of business. Really? Yeah. And so they've been gone for 30 days or so. And uh, that might be a good place. It's all concrete floors, big doors, office. But I don't think. Didn't you, didn't you say the Fastenal was owned by who? I think it's Bob Elaine. Yeah. It's, you, you know if he's going to sell that or? I think it's a leasing property. I, Okay. I haven't talked to them about it. Yeah, okay. It's not for sale, but yeah. And then I, I have these. One is the Gilman. They went 199000 right on, right across from uh, that hardware store there, right up out near the interstate. It uh, was owned by a Schroeder. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It used well, to be a garage. It's kind well, of a small yeah. office. Yeah. I've been in it. But uh, that's for sale. You guys can look at them if you want to pass them around. Uh, yeah, that building would be about the right size and everything. Uh, we got a 121 North Yacht in Watsika. Is that the old Canada building? That may be. 210,000 of them. Old doctor's office and ambulance dispatch, right? 199,000. Where's that? It gives the uh, 508. East Crescent Street in Gilman. I don't have any pictures or anything. My wife, my wife got, got this information for me. 123 West Oak Street, 149,000. You know what that is? That's old coffee place across the, from, uh, it went out of business. Celebrations. Copper Pot. Yeah. yeah, across from Celebrations. But there's no big, no big door to it. I mean, can you put uh, one Chris in? has got shades off. <laughs> But that's reasonable. It's got everything inside. And then 123 North uh, 8th Street. That's the old Chinook building, but now I understand it's in the floodplain. So I, I heard. Right? I think so. Yeah. It needs a lot of work. There's just a few. There's so many places in town that are vacant. I'm 
sure the Kennedy buildings. They want a lot of money for it because uh, that's the reason they moved out. They wanted an extreme amount of rent money. It's a big building and needs a lot of work. So. That's all I've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, I've been in that building. That one Gilman, I don't know. Big and vacant inside, concrete floors. Which it's got a little office. A little office in the corner. Yeah. Only been in it once or twice, but it, yeah, it, it would be a good size. It would have room for the freezers and everything. Yeah, and it's, it, it's got the big door and everything. So, so yeah. is that the one you own? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't want 115 for this chicken. Yeah. So if you guys are interested, you know, you know we got some more. I don't know. Who that did. was a prefab building. I got some pricing on. Where is it? It'd be we'd site it wherever we wanted to put it. Oh, okay. But I was just roughly totaling that up, and it's like 150 over 150 thousand before we would do anything in the way of setting up the interior the way right. we want. Which, and that doesn't have concrete, which is probably 20,000, I don't know. So, trouble is, I'm, I'm hearing, and I don't know if it's true, that we need to do something quick because they may draw back this money. You got anything on that? Uh, the, when they settled the budget this last week, they said they're going to call back the uh, COVID money that was left over. Well, that's a really big umbrella, and I one of the examples I think is in the school districts, like Milford's building and other building. Some of that, these schools got huge sums of COVID money. And I think the schools either have to spend it or send it back. There, that's one example. But well, I'm watching TV. They were talking about taking full narco money. So, are you suggesting that the money that we already have here in our hands is going to be taken away from us? Could be. Are um, they going to do that? If it's not spent, I don't know. That's what it, that's what they said on the news. Yeah. I think that's a little bit far fetched. I hope so. Oh, they can find ways to do it, just like how they paid the sheriff. Expound on what? What issue? The the sheriff that gets paid by the state. Where does that money come from, Jill? Well, I was told that it was being taken from our replacement tax. Your what? Kurt would know more than that one. From our replacement tax. So we used to be getting more replacement tax money. So what they did is whatever we're paying the sheriff, they're deducting it from that. So yeah. Cute. Yeah. So that's what they'll do if they want to claw this back. You say they how would they do it? Well they'll just keep other monies that they would be sending. Yeah, like we got a lottery to fund our schools, but then we're going to reduce what we give you in, yeah. from the income tax line. Yeah. That's this, part of it you're not going to change, well. I know. It's just they're going to do what they want to do. I still, and thank you for doing this work, um, I tried, did talk to John about a building in Milford, but he thinks it's too big. Um, in fact, maybe after the meeting, when I have, we could ask Bob to tell us how big that building is. This um, it's 149.9, but what used to be the copper pot would be a nice location. There's no garage door in it, as you said, but the building looks. How like big it's is that building? Uh, hold on, I'll figure out. Lot size is ten thousand. The taxes are thirty-six ninety-four. Twenty-one seventy-six square feet with fifteen parking spaces. And hundred and forty-nine nine. 
It has a basement, large foundation. It's not with red clay, Charlie. Mm -hmm. No, it says basement. It says basement, unless that's an error because. It's new construction. That seems odd. Yeah. Well, maybe that's an error in the listing. Because yeah. if it does have a basement, you're not going to want to drive a car in there. I've already had conversations with the coroner about that building, and my memory is correct. I don't think he felt that it would be suitable. Okay. That's a slice of bar. What? Slice of bars. I don't know what this ambulance is. U.S. Route 24 in Gilman. Old doctor's office and ambulance dispatch center that probably got a big door on it. Now. <clears throat> McDonald's bought that Who? after they closed down the doctor's office. Wayne Drosh, the owner operator at the McDonald's, okay. um, he has since retired and he sold he sold the stores. So he's trying to sell that office. It's been redone inside. There's multiple offices inside. There's a few bathrooms. There's like a, a bigger conference room area, and then that's a two car garage. Um, this, just to dispel any rumors, this says stories levels one, so I'm going to guess that other is incorrect. The basement information. Right. Have you looked at this one, John? Uh, the one at Gilman? No, I haven't. I don't know. I don't have a picture of it, so I don't know where it is. I, don't, I can't place it. It's right along the railroad track. Okay. Um, pretty much across from. Uh, is there a car dealer on the corner? Right? Yeah. And then there's uh, alignment shop, and then it's that building. Okay. It's on the uh, west side of the building? Yeah. Okay. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> I'll be happy to take a look at it. But they want 199000 Well, he's. He's had it for sale for a while because we were looking at places four years ago. He to go sold this, yeah. so he might negotiate. Yeah. This isn't the same building here. This is a different one that you gave me. Well, I don't know. That's a doctor's building there. Okay. No. Oh. Oh. I guess we keep scattered on approach to this, but I mean, do we need to just narrow what we're actually wanting to do or look at, or I mean, criteria? Yeah, I mean, we're here, yeah. we're there, we're here, there, and everywhere. We want a big door, an office space, concrete floor, concrete floor with a drain, I think, bathroom. bathroom. Location open. Yeah, that's kind of. Is he one next to the interstate? Not even closer to. At one point, he landed over that way. Closer to the interstate. Uh -huh. And then I don't know where the morgue is and Champagne that he's now going to. Because that was kind of <clears throat> what changed his thinking. Right. But that could change in the future too, depending on how things go and grow. I'm still kind of stuck on the idea if we possibly can to keep the buildings, county buildings, in one season. Yeah, but I realize we might have to. If we find the perfect spot, we might have to be flexible on that. My wife found one and she said, oh, this would be good. I'll look at it closer to Kanky County. I guess. I'm still in my garage. <laughs> and do you recall last month I had indicated that 
some of the problems I was having had to do with some of the demands on the time that, that I have available. And that's continued for the past month, mostly trying to get the ordinances for the wind and solar completed. Uh, Dagger and I spent many, many hours, many times working here, well past the 4.30 closing time to get that done. It's all done now, so I've got some time available to focus more on this project. I do have two ideas. I think I shared one of them with you last time about possibilities over at IMH with that one building that they have available or may be available. I've had conversations with Mike Toaster about it, and he seems to be somewhat receptive. I also have a, not given up entirely, on, and the sheriff has indicated some willingness to cooperate too, as far as perhaps using our maintenance shed for, for that. And I had some conversations with Chris about it this morning before the meeting, and he thinks there might be some possibilities as well. It makes a lot of sense to me because the south end of that maintenance shed is already got everything in it that we would want for a morgue. The only thing that we would have to do would be to probably add on to the north end of that building to compensate for the loss of space. I believe that's one of the things that's possible. I think it's worth our, uh, worth our time to explore it. Part of it has to do probably with the cooperation of the mayor, which we're engaged in right now with some of things that we have ongoing with him, some of the things that he's wanting of us in so far as the Martin Avenue Street extension and the TIF district there. Uh, we have to give our okay on some of that. So he's very interested in our cooperation in that respect. I'm interested in his cooperation with some of these. So I think there's an opportunity for some mutual benefit there. That obviously, has to be completed or finalized before we can get too far down the road, but I, I certainly think it's very doable and very possible. So I would like to have at least the next month to explore all those options and so forth. To me right now, from all the things that have been discussed this morning and all the things that we've gone through over this whole project, if we could use the maintenance shed, I think that would be by far be our best option. Is it? <clears throat> That's what I, what I have. Let me finish. Oh, excuse what me. What I had in mind at the maintenance shed, if we were to go that route, would be to use the south end of it for the morgue. Where there's two overhead doors on the building and one walkthrough door in between the two of them. So if you use the, if you took where the south overhead door is and went south from there, that would be the area that would be used for the morgue. We have all, all the ingredients that we need right there, ready to go. We probably would have to add on to the north end of that building to compensate for the loss of space. But I think that's that's the doable part that I think we can get worked out with the mayor. It's just simply be putting in a concrete floor and, and extending the same construction of the building that's there right now, which is basically a pole building. I think the cost for that would be in line with some of the costs that we're looking at for some of these other projects. Would you have to put up a wall? I probably would put up a wall, yes. Is this, <clears throat> these thoughts are different than what we previously discussed as to going to the east of the building where that swale is? Um, <clears throat> And that's dry on that south end. I'm not. We're not adding out to the south end. I know, oh, okay. But on the north we're end, it's dry. We're going to use the south end of the existing. I misspoke. But on the north end, that's dry. It's dry. Uh, it, there's a. You have to look at the uh, look at the land. Probably the first half of it is at the same level as, as the surrounding area, and then it. And then it dips down to that ditch that's behind there. Right, because I've and, watched when that ditch does have water in it. And that ditch drops down there. And when the maintenance shed was built, that was that same level of terrain was there and it was filled in to accommodate the maintenance shed. So 
you would have we would have to do something similar to to accommodate that part of it, which I don't think is that difficult because first place if you're going to put a concrete floor and you're going to be excavating quite a bit out to make room for that, and that excavation could simply be moved to the east to fill in that part that needs to be filled in. I think that's probably what was done when the maintenance shed was erected initially. Okay, my second question is, is when we were all, looked like we were going to build at the sheriff's office where the tower is, uh, we ran into that last minute problem with not knowing where the utilities are. Do we know, are we, can we avoid that problem? Do we know where the utilities if are? If I remember, and Chris, you can correct me, the gas line comes in from the north. The gas, the electric, and the sanitary and the water all come in on the northwest corner of that. So those are known known things. Yes. Because right before we had the parking lot overlay done, you could see in the parking lot where they trenched in, they had cut out and then reasphalted where they tied into everything over near the back side of the jail there. So all those utilities come in on the north side, northwest corner side there. So it would be over that. I don't know if that would be an issue or not. Um, I, I think I think what I'm simply saying is another idea. I think it's an idea that's doable. I think it's an idea that's so really good. Investigating. I that's that's think, kind of what I'd like to do. Well, I'll go down to the FSA, but they're doing uh, what was determination? If that's determined to be a wetland, we can't fill it in. And that's just, they won't allow it. That would be your glitch there. Okay. I mean, that's just something that we, I, I don't know if they were going to be doing that part or if they were just doing over further, but we could ask them to include that or whatever. But yeah, if it's a wet one. But that needs to be answered before we spin our wheels on right. looking at any kind of yeah. construction. The other thing that we, we're we lacking, we've encountered this in many different, and you all know it, situations with the city, and I'm not saying it's the city's fault or our fault, but we lack documentation of what we've done. So any agreement or terms that we come to with the city or whatever, there needs to be um, documentation for further down the road for, for obvious reasons. And we've encountered that numerous times. John spent hours looking for maps and, you know, just different situations that have come up. You know, there's always this question about where the line is and just many situations we run into. So let's document, 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 agreement, whatever we need to do so that in the future, future boards don't have that problem with whatever we do. I guess this would be a question for Amanda. If we get the determination of what's a wetland and what's not, is that something you should be storing with your records or should that go with somehow for Brian to store for us? Or where are we gonna look for that in the future? If, rather than having to have it redetermined which the next time we try to do something, where do we store that stuff so it's accessible? Down in the basement, there's a lot of files. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, in the last 30 years, they've yeah, made a lot of changes. Was built. Yeah. So. But then, at least if we document, then there's a history and we know why things happened, and you know, you can determine laws were different then and it was allowed and now it's not. And things make sense. I guess, to, I guess to your point, I, I probably agree with that. I've had conversations with the mayor as well because there's a lot of this dispute or discussion as to even where the boundaries of the city are. Yeah, I, I just mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I've suggested to the mayor that we should all sit down and get that resolved. I am now once and for all. Well, I would think that'd be fairly clear by looking at the tax record who gets the taxes for this and that and the other thing. Yeah, you, would, you would think so, sir, but you know, <laughs> talk to people again. Well, they they amazed at the taxes that they take and so forth. Well, if they say that's not part of the city, then you say, okay, great, and you don't get those taxes that are off. And Joe only thought he had it ironed out in what Joe wanted, or the line was. Yeah, he had one idea or one opinion, and I'm not saying who's right or wrong. Joe probably was right, but I can tell you obviously that the city has an entirely different opinion. A lot of it has to do with the maintenance on this road out here. I know. So we get some questions ironed out, there's always going to be disputes and so forth. Well, and I don't know if we still do, but in Part the past... Part of the reason why I'm saying I'm trying to cultivate a good relationship with the mayor so that we can get some of these things done in an amicable way that will be a benefit to both parties. Well, and that's the reason for my statement. I understand where you're going, but, you know, we can have John and John agree, and then in 20 years we go, what, what did we do? What did John and John agree to? It needs to be a written. I can assure you that that's not the way it's going to be. Okay, good. That's what I want to hear. So. Yes. No, I just want to let the committee know where I'm at, and like I said, I'd like to investigate the possibility with IMH as well as over here at the maintenance. Kyle, why don't we set out? A list of one, two, three of what we need to do, and I think okay, so we know where the utilities are. Maybe finding out about the wetlands is be the number one thing. So which uh, could be restricted because it could take. And there's months. no point in spending another minute on it if we're shot down right there. Right. Uh, so I guess that's where we begin to that, find I out. Mean, we may not know this summer whether or not it's determined to be a wetland because there's a backlog. I just see this a wetland issue as a whole separate issue, actually. Well, but if we have to fill in, oh, you can't fill in a wetland. Yeah. And, and where he's at, it's, it drops off. And it technically is part of the floodplain. If you don't fill it in, it's in that field that they're determining wetlands on. So, it's a question that needs answers. Yeah. I, I, mean, I want to get this done, but I don't want to do it wrong. And I'm not opposed to doing that, but that ditch does get water. And this is different. I understand we're talking about something different. And maybe I can go down there and I'll look at the map and say, oh, no, you're fine. All right. Right. All right. That's all on the. Well, wait a minute. I, I still have a question, and I, this has bothered me for years and years and years. And down there by the courthouse, in the corner of that field, of course, it's not right now, but it stands with water. So, with what we discussed the last month, and anything that we're looking is that going to correct that problem? Is that yes. clear back to when um, Kyle, you know, I brought it up then. Is it a broken tile or what is it? Is what? Why is that always wet there? Well, it's the lowest spot. They just look around. Yeah. But sure. just recently, they've extended that from Porter Avenue clear to Sugar Creek. That always hasn't been the case in years past. So what I'm saying is there's a really good outlet there now that uh, we need to hook into that drain that corner and uh, mm -hmm. now what are you going to say Mr. Dillon? It, it's a wetland you can't drain it if, it if it's determined to be a wetland you cannot drain it you cannot put a tile in it you cannot There's tile there now well, well I, it hooks in the corner right? it, it cannot be a but it's well broken. okay there is a broken tile there yes it shows there allowance for fixing a you 
It just you bugs should be you. able to fix something that's pre-existing, but you can't enlarge it. That giant mud puddle has just bugged me forever. Yeah, there's a tile in there that comes straight north, drains uh, the parking lots, and comes right down to that Porter Avenue uh, cash basin. And, so that's parking lot water that's going in there. Some of it, yeah, yeah. So by converting that to a different spot, it might be a different place for it to go drained away different into the into the um, storm sewer at a different location might just or we could just fix the stinking tile <laughs> why would you want to do that <laughs> yeah just fix the stinking tile so it's not a big hole oh, yes sir <laughs> yes but to reiterate we just said yeah everything in all those parking lots from the jail Courthouse, both sides, north, south, drain right there. Comes to the T in Porter Avenue. So, are we basically creating our own wetland? Is that what's happening? In a sense, we're probably contributing to it. Yeah. But it might be better if we just fix the stinking tile. <laughs> it wouldn't be a wetland if we would fix it. Isn't that, I think the city's plans are to connect that storm tile around in the water. And come around up Porter and up 10th Street and hook it in their existing. So that all is going to be drained out towards Legion Park and and to the river, like it is now. Well, what what they tell me at FSA is that area there that's a wetland. Yes, there is something there, but we cannot expand it. You know, if, if it's a four inch or a six inch, we can't make it a 10 inch. You know, it, it is what it is and we are not, if it's determined to be a wetland, we cannot do anything above what's there. So, I, I believe it's can. That's the count to us. But then that's far out. And if we're, but if we're bringing more from this project here over there, will that still yeah, it's not that far. Will it add more enough to it that that tile won't support it anymore? I can tell you some of the things that are occurring in that area that also play into this. And other kinds. It's probably way too early to know exactly how it's all going to shake out. But you all know the city has been engaged for some time now in buying up properties that are flooded in the, in the northwest, primary northwest part of the city. And the city has lost a lot of population through that whole process. The city is very determined to correct that. And they're very determined to expand the city out in this direction out here. Okay? I've advised them that that's fine, but our farmland is going to stay farmland. We're not going to give that to the city or build houses or anything there. But they want to go beyond our farmland with their plans. So all this is tied in with what you're talking about right now, and the extension of Martin Avenue and, and some of those things are a big part of it. So I, like I said, it's way too early to know what what it's all going to be like when it shakes out, but I think I don't think we want to rule anything out at this particular time. Even an area that might be determined to be a wetland is it's not impossible to get around that in some fashion or other. And I don't know all the ins and outs of that, but I know that bigger, bigger changes have been made in the history of this country than something. Okay, anything else? All right, we have some bids. First one is open and take action on bids for paying exterior at administrative center. We have two bids. Okay. Okay, so. The one was given to me at 8 o'clock this morning. And why did they not give it to us sooner? No idea. 
So it was supposed to be in last Thursday. It came, in, came this morning. So they technically, I guess, we want to open the one, and not the other. Or? Well, if it's past the deadline, I mean, that's why we have rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's worth its way cheaper. <laughs> I don't know. It's past the deadline. Okay. Plus, we take it down the road. Well, we could put it out to rebid if you want to do that. Uh, yeah. Pass them around the room here. They're unopened. I know. Pass them around the room. The one that says 845 is what it came in late. So if we rebid it, we basically say you were late, but here's another yes, chance. Yes. Mm -hmm. So probably the best thing is not to fair to the first guy. Right. Right. So the best thing is to open the one. Yeah, that's and determine whether or not the bid is within our budget. I mean, it may be. Yeah, I said we opened the first one that came properly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It is from Fine Lines Painting in Crescent City. Car wash exterior building, scrape off loose and peeling paint, primer coat on peeling paint spots, mask and plastic off all windows, doors, etc. Paint exterior of building, paint letters on the exterior of building. Labor cost $28,000. Materials 5 gallons of DTM primer, 10 rolls of painter's tape, 2 rolls of painter's plastic, 90 gallons of DTM exterior paint to match, 4 gallons to paint lettering. Material cost $13,600. Total cost $41,600. Was that for the whole building? How much money did you have for that project? Well, we received those <clears throat> funds from the uh, secondary ARPA. It's the local tribe and municipal funds or, or whatnot. And we received $100,000. We've received the first 50000 of that. So we have that first 50000 sitting in the account. And that's why it was discussed maybe a big project like getting the building painted might be something to look at because it can be used for updating uh, governmental service buildings so no it just it doesn't say a color did we tell the color i just i said it was staying the same we talked about that is it paint to match it says yeah so is it a little bit of color or a gray color or it's a gray that's filled in the whole No, it's correct. Never paid any attention to like right. Changing the color would have increased that quite a bit. And then, then you probably would have put multiple layers. Correct. Did we have an estimate that we thought it should cost? Well, when Chris and I talked about it two years ago, we put it on the capital improvements list. We had budgeted 50000 and that was two years ago before everything kind of yeah. shot up too. So they're within that range. I mean, I'm by all means, not a pain expert, but my yeah. opinion is yes, they are. And you know, we're dealing with prevailing wage here, which yeah, is, you know, I was in that business for a long time before I was here. Do you know these people, Chris? I mean, that's right here. Today. I do. Good job. Well. I do know them. The, am I allowed to say? They, the head of this used to work for Dexter Decorating 
for years and then went out on his own, oh, probably a dozen years ago. And they keep busy, they do a lot of work. And I've been told by a couple of local contractors that they do fine work. So they're insured. He contacted me shortly after the bid came out. I met him here, told him what's going on, and I let him do his thing. And, um, yeah, we turned bid. Do we have any places? I mean, there used to be trees here that would have been an impediment to them. Is there any, is there any other place around that would have anything like that that would be a concern? No, there's this tree right by the health department that I need to get trimmed on. Um, really, no. They'll have to take down those awnings. You know, there's what, three, four of those they'll have to remove. Um, around 911. Gets a little cumbersome there with some of those bushes around there. But otherwise, no, it's pretty wide open. So, the discussion, motion? I think we should go with it. We put that in the form of a motion? Yes, I think we should go with fine, was it? Fine line painting. Fine line painting for the, the amount that they have, 41.6. <coughs> I'll second that. Bowers? Yes. Benz? Yes. Crow? Yes. Zumo? Yes. Barons? Yes. Okay. Next is open take action on bids for fence and dog doors at the animal control building. We have one of market development and construction. Is that a yard shed in the way? No. Little existing block the wall and reset block from four foot seventeen inch wide by thirty four inch high opening. Install four guillotine doors with new openings, doors supplied by order. I put that in there. We can either supply them or they can purchase them. Okay. Total bid amount $9,100. All prevailing wage requirements have been taken into account. I have some additional info. He's, when he turned that in to me on time, um, he was still waiting on numbers for the fence. Um, I can't remember if it was Tuzian or what, who, but they wouldn't give him. He was having trouble getting a linear foot price, um, and he said he would. He has full intention on bidding that as well, but he said it wouldn't be. He wouldn't be able to have those numbers for another week or so. Okay. So I don't know how that works. So that would be an addition to. Yes, yeah. this, this is, is just the guillotine doors. So this. Okay. And I guess maybe that's why maybe nobody else did it because they couldn't get pricing in time either. Can we can we do that? How big of a rush is this? Can we pen that or table that bid mm -hmm. for thirty days and hopefully we would have the fence price and don't know the whole picture next month? Or do we have to well I guess tabling it would be taking action, right? Well, I have, a, I have an ignorant question here. Yeah. Is it possible just to do it until the full board meeting and hopefully have something then? Because that's what, a week and a day away? And maybe you'd have something by next Tuesday? Yeah. He was fairly confident he would have it early this week. I don't know the rules for allowed to do that or not. I guess then we get back into the same as the last one yeah. where we go know, one way and then the other. Yeah. So. I mean, we okay. didn't accept a bid from the one because they were late. Well, this is partial. So it's not the whole bid. I don't know. What's the right way to do it? So I mean, do we 
Does it have to be one project as a whole, or should it be? Or you include that and then redid it before the fencing portion of it? I didn't realize he was trying. I my understanding is that he was not going to have anything today, and that we were going to. It was still on the agenda, um, but my understanding is that he was not going to have anything for today. So we would be extending this out for 30 days. So we wouldn't be opening anything until next month. But then we got this, so I thought, okay, he, he got everything today. And I guess the next clarification, he gave a labor price. Was he just waiting for the linear foot of the fencing, but this included installation of the fencing? Or is this is only the guillotine door project. This has no, nothing to do with the fencing. So that would be a technically an entire separate bid now that we just have this partial. So since it's an incomplete, the incomplete project bid, could you That's why I'm asking, put it back out can for? You, can you just approve the partial bid? Can you just approve the, the dog door side of it and yep. then rebid out? No, what I'm saying is just rebid the whole project since it was. I yeah, think it's so. Not, it's not a responsive bid. Right, it's, it's um, only partial project, so maybe we could just set it out for rebid again. And that'll give him plenty of time to get the bid I think And then so we just too, hold yeah. on to that till next month? Yeah. Yeah, is that how that works? I mean, no, I think somebody we'll else might bid, right. but this is only partial bid, so. He can include that can, with the project it's not, bid. It hasn't put his all of his information out there to the right. public to bid against. Yeah, I think. There may or may not be any other bid. I'll make a motion to rebid the project. Okay. I'll second that. The complete project. Okay. I'll second that. It doesn't matter. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All, 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 all. Okay, we'll send it out for reading. Everybody had the claims sent to them? Yeah, um, any questions on the claims? Yeah, I just am curious, what's ESI host service, Chris? Oh, it says phone service. Is this our new? Yeah. That's a new name. Okay, got it. Thanks. We're switching from AT&T to ESI, ESI, and that has been a holy nightmare. Um, I just got an email this morning from Greg from Reuter Technologies again that they have one line left to port and um, we should start serv seeing some service credits on our on our bill. So I'm going to keep an eye out for those. But yeah, that, that's been a nightmare switching. Okay, any other questions on claims? It always is. It's always a nightmare. We did that years ago. The management did it in the back when the area was here. I think we had like forty thousand dollars or something like that pending with I can't remember. It's a nightmare. A nightmare all of us. Another question? Motion to approve the claim. I'll make the motion to approve the claim. Second? I'll second it. Okay. Hours? Yes. Fence? Yes. Crow? Yes. Zoom off? Yes. Fan? Yes. Very old business. Any new business? A motion to adjourn. So moved. Another second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We are adjourned.